Hello, this lecture will cover pages 80 through 82 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on describing logic circuits part H, the final part in this series. Propagation delay. Start out on page 80. Um, let me define what propagation delay is first of all. The time it takes for a system gate to produce an appropriate output after it receives an input signal. Um, consider this circuit here. We're just going to use a simple inverter. And uh, we have an input. And either that input's going to go low or it's going to be high. And when it changes state, the output is going to invert. If there's a 0 and it goes from a 0 to a 1 on the input, the output's going to go from a 1 to a 0. That's called propagation delay, the time it takes the output of a gate to, re to react to the input signal. If you take a look here, um, if we stretch out the timeline so on this right here, if the input goes from a 0 to a 1 on this inverter gate up here, it doesn't do it with a infinite slope, with a discontinuity. It, does it, it takes time. It takes a finite amount of time for it to rise. And when the, when the input goes from a high value to a low value, it takes a finite amount of time for that to occur. If you take a look at the response characteristic of the gate, you'll see that on the output it doesn't respond immediately to the input. The, out, the input goes from a 0 to a 1 and some time later the output goes from the 1 to the 0. When the input goes from a 1 to a 0, sometimes later the output goes from the 0 to the 1. Now, it's hard to find out where this maximum value is or where this minimum value is with regard to these responses. So what they do is they measure these points from a 50% level. In other words, it's pretty easy to determine what the 50%, what the halfway point is when it's going up and when it's coming down. Or when it's coming down on the output or it's going, it's going up, it's going high. If you take a look, the output always defines the propagation delay. So the propagation de delay, high to low, we're looking at the output, is the time it takes the output to the respond to the input. The propagation time low to high is the time, again, it takes the output to respond to the input. The definition of propagation is always defined by what the output is doing. Take a look at the output signal here. The output signal is going high to low. That's the high to low propagation specification. Here it's going from a low to a high. That's the low to high propagation specification. The propagation time high to low does not always have to equal the propagation time low to high. They're not always equal. Sometimes they are. But don't assume the propagation time it's going to react the same going high to low, low to high on the output. They don't always equal one another. You might want to stop the video for a minute and go to your specifications and I want you to pull out in your specs uh, pages 273 and 275A. 273 and 275A, because we're going to do a few examples here. This is a relatively short video. We should finish this up in about three minutes. But if you take a look at the first example, let's take a look at the propagation time for 7404. You want to look at your specs on page 275B. So if you look at page 275 here, this is page 275. Notice it is the hex inverter, the 7404 package. And the specifications we want to look at are on the back here. We want to look at the characteristics here in the spec sheet. Propagation time low to high. Propagation time high to low. The maximum typical, it's 9 and 10. You can see they're not equal. But we're going to work with the maximum values in these we want worst case scenarios. So propagation time low to high, 15 nanoseconds. That's pretty fast, but you know, in an IC 
that, that time differential you're, you're talking about is really significant in high-speed electronics, you know. Um, propagation time high to low, 15 nanoseconds. They're the same. The maximum value is the same. So if you take a look here, I'm pulling from the specs at the bottom of page 80. Propagation time high to low max, 15 nanoseconds. Propagation time low to high max, 15 nanoseconds. They're equal. Let's take a look at page number 81 in your lecture notes. We have a 7400. We want to look at page 273 here now. Let me take a look at page 273. That's the quad 2 input NAND gate package. This is what you should be looking at here on page 273 and I'm going to look at the propagation times down here. We're looking down in this part of the spec sheet right here and we're going to be pulling these numbers out here. Notice they're not equal. The T propagation low to high is 22 nanoseconds and the, pre -prop the propagation time high to low is 15 nanoseconds. So if we go over here and look, if the switch is pressed at time t equals zero, what is the propagation time max for that NAND gate? How much time does it take that output to react? Well, if you take a look, that output is low. That, that output's going to be low because if there's a one here, remember, you don't have to look at the truth table for a NAND gate. You know how NAND gates work. Let the symbol tell the story. A one here, it's a high true input. These are high true inputs. There's no bubbles there. A 1 here and a 1 here is the only time you get a low here. So when these are both 1, you get a low. Well, this switch is open, so this is pulled up to 5 volts. So there's a 1 here, and this is pulled up to 5 volts. So both these lines are pulled up to 5 volts. There's a 1 here and a 1 here, which puts a low here. When you push this switch here, that's going to put a low on this input here. A low on this input, this output will react by going high. How much time does it take that to happen? Well, if you take a look at your specifications for the 7400 on page 273, we want T propagation low to high because it's defined by the output. The output is going low to high. The answer to this problem is 22 nanoseconds. Look at this example down here. I want you to see spec page 275B. This is for 7400. These are the hex inverters, and we have three of them. Time t equals zero, the, out, the input is going from low to a high. And I want to know the maximum propagation time of that output reacting to this input. If you take a look, you have to define these outputs. If this has gone high, this has gone low, this has gone high, this has gone low. So the equation is the maximum propagation time is two propagation times high to low. And one propagation time low to high. Well, it didn't make any difference here because they're 15 nanoseconds max. So you couldn't have messed up on this one. The answer is 45 nanoseconds. What I want you to do now is I want you to replace these inverters with 7,400 NAND gates. Remember, you can tie the inputs together and you can make a NAND gate look like an inverter. And I want you to tell me what the maximum propagation would time would be. I want you to turn off the video and I want you to replace these with 7,400 NAND gates. A NAND gate, a NAND gate, and a NAND gate with the inputs tied together to form an inverter. And tell me what the maximum propagation time would be. If you did it correctly, there's the answer. That concludes the lecture.